Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to spawn RBD object by using pin constraint in Houdini, so let's dive in. So the first step is to create a new geometry node. So here the first thing is to create a line and later we can spawn different RBD object on this line but of course you can use any geometry as an input. So in my case I will add a circle. So here I can press P to open the parameter of this node. So in my case I will change the radius to 2 and 2 for each axis. I will increase the division number to 256 and here I will change the arc type to open arc. So in my case, I will add an attribute noise to create some deformation on this line, but of course you can use any line as an input. If you want, you can use a Bezier curve to, to get a bit more control over the shape of the line. But in my case, I will just add a circle and an, an attribute noise. And here by default, the attribute noise will add some noise on the color attributes. So in my case, I will change the color attribute to position attributes. And now you can see that we have added some noise on the circles. So here for the settings, you can play with different settings if you want, but in my case, I will change the range value to 0 centered. I will change the amplitude to 15, and here I will decrease the amplitude on the Y axis. So to do that, I will enable the three axis here by clicking on this little icon. And I will put the Y value at 0.5 instead of 1. And here I will uh, go to the element size, and I will increase it to 1.25. Here for the offset, I will change it to 21.75. And here I can go to the fractal tab and I will uh, put the roughness at zero. So now you can see I have this result for the line. Of course, I can play with the offset to get different shapes. But in my case, I will keep the offset at 21.75. So now I can add a resample node. And here with the resample node, I will uh, keep the length at 0.1. So in that case, you can see that we have even point distribution over the line. And here I will also enable the curve view attribute. So now I will add a smooth node. For the smooth node, I will keep the strength at 10, but I will decrease the filter quality to 1. In that case, I have something a bit smoother on the sharp corner here. So now to create the spawning effect on the RBD simulation, we have to play with the p-scale attribute on the points. So here we have our line with multiple points. So you can visualize the point by clicking on these icons. And later we can copy some, ge some geometries on different points on the line. But before that, we have to create a p-scale attribute that vary over time. So to do that, we can add an attribute VOP. Here we can dive inside. And here you can add a noise to our points. So to do that, you can use the AA noise. You can plug the position to the position input and you can plug that to the color just to get a preview of the noise. Also, we want to animate this noise over time. So to do that, we can add the time value to this noise. So let's add a vector 3 to vector 4. So vector to vector 4. You can plug the position to the first input and you can add the time to the uh, last input of the vector 4. And now you can plug that to the AA noise. Now you can see that we have a noise with four dimensions. So you can see we have 4D inputs, 1D noise. And here for the setting of the noise, you can decrease the frequency to 0.1, but of course you can play with different value if you want. And here for the amplitude, you can increase it to 10. Now you can see that we have a preview of the noise with black and white value. So that means the white value is equal to 1 and the black value is equal to 0. So here for the roughness, I will decrease it to 0. But of course it's up to you. You can play with different settings if you want. And now I will add a fit range just after the noise to get a bit more control over the value. And here I will put the source minimum to minus 0.5 and the source maximum to 0.5. So now if I click on play on the timeline, you can see that we have an animation with the noise. But for now, the animation is a bit slow. So to increase the speed of the animation, we can add a multiply constant just after the time. So we can add this node here. And in my case, I will put the value at 10. Of course, it's up to you. You can change it if you want. So now if I click on play, you can see that we have something a bit more fast for the animation of the noise. You can always play with different settings if you want. And here I can export a p-scale attribute because for now we have plugged the noise on the CD attribute just to get a preview of the noise. But we need to export a p-scale attribute for the different points. So here you can add a bind export and you can plug that to the input. And here you can replace the name attribute by p-scale. And this is a float value, so we can keep the default value here for the type, which is float. So now we can go back to the sub level by clicking on the geometry icon here. So now to see the results of our p-scale attribute, we can add a geometry on the different points. So let's add a platonic. And here we can change it to maybe this one. So we have our geometry here. Let's add a copy to points. So we can plug the geometry on the first input and we can plug the points on the second input. And now if I click on play, you can see that we have the geometries that vary over time because the p-scale attribute is animated over time with our noise. 
So now you can see at the frame one of the timeline, we have some pieces with a p-scale value at one, and we want to have the p-scale value at zero for a few frames. So to do that, you can go back to the attribute VOP, and here you can add a mix node. So you can plug the noise to the second input. You can add a constant value on the first input, and you can plug that to the first input of the mix. And here for the constant value, you can keep the default value at zero. And now you can add a fit range, and here you can plug the frame value to the fit. And here you can plug that to the last input of the mix. So now we can create a little offset with this node. So maybe we can create an offset of 15 frames. So we can change the source mean to one for the frame number one. We can change the source max to 15 for the frame number 15. And we can keep the destination mean to zero and destination max to one. So in that case, we can create an offset for 15 frames to zero and one. So here you can plug that to the p scale attribute and you can plug that to the color attribute. So now let's see the result. So you can see now at the frame one, everything is at zero. And at the frame 15, you can get the original value. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials. And that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So now let's add an attribute wrongles. And with this one, we can add a little multiplier for the p-scale attribute. In that case, we can have a bit more control very fast. So we can add the f at p-scale attribute, and we can multiply that with a channel. So times equal channel float, and we can rename it something like p-scale melt. And here in my case, I will put the value at 0.75, but of course it's up to you to get uh, more or less scale. So if you want to increase the scale, you can put that at 1.5, for example. But in my case, I will put the value at 0.75. So now we can add a bit of noise to the p-scale attribute. So let's add the attribute adjust float. And by default, the attribute adjust float node got the p-scale attribute here, which is what we want. And here we can add that to uh, multiply instead of add. And here we can put that to noise. And here for the minimum value, we can put that to one and for the maximum to 2.5. And here we can change the element size to 0.05. Here under the fractal tab, we can decrease the roughness to zero. And here you can play with the ramp if you want. So here in my case, I will put maybe something like this. Also maybe something here and here another one here, and another one here. So you can create your own ramp if you want, but in my case, I will create maybe something like this. So now let's replace this input geometry with uh, some 3D model. Of course, you can use your own 3D model if you want, or you can buy the project file with a link in the descriptions, and you can get access to every 3D model, texture, light, and so on. So you can check the link in the description if you want. So here to add a 3D model, you can add the file node. So here to import 3D model, I will click on this icon and here under my geo folder, I have some 3D model here. So for the tutorial, I will use three um, objects, but in the final scene, I have used six 3D models. So if you buy the project file, you'll get access to uh, the six 3D models. So here, let's import maybe this one, maybe this one. And now you can see that we have the 3D model here. So we can add the attribute delete node. And here we can clean everything, maybe except our normal attribute and UV attribute. So we can click on delete non-selected. In that case, we have only two attributes. So now we can use a poly reduce node. So in that case, we can simulate some proxy geometry and later we can upraise the simulation after the RBD simulation. So here for the poly reduce, I will put the value at 10%. In that case, we have very low poly model. So now let's add a color node just to get a preview of the different model. So for this one, maybe I can add a red color. Now let's create a variant attribute for this object. So let's add an attribute wrangle. And here for this one, we can type E at variant is equal to zero. And now you can add a match size node. And here you can put the model on the center of the scene and you can click on scale to fit. So now we have our first model. So we can select everything here. 
You can copy them by clicking on Alt and left click. And here you can replace the model on the file node. So I will add another model here. And here on the attribute triangles, I will replace the value of the variant attribute. Instead of zero, I will put one. Now I can copy everything one more time. And here I will change the model on the file node. Maybe I can add this one. And here I will go to the attribute triangles and I will change the variant attribute to two. So now I can select all the match size nodes. I can put that with a merge node. So now I want to copy randomly these three different models on the different points of the line. So to do that, we can use an attribute from pieces node. And here you can put the geometry library on the second input and you can put the points on the first input of the attribute from pieces node. So here we can use a variant attribute as a piece attribute. So you can select the variant attribute. So now you can put the geometry on the first input of the copy two points and you can plug that to the second input of the copy two points. And here you can see that we have a piece attribute. So in our case, it's not the name attribute, but variant attribute. And now you can see the results of the copy two points. And you can scroll under the timeline. And you can see that we have different model copy randomly under the points. So now let's add a null to specify this is the input for the RBD simulation. So you can put RBD in. So now let's add the RBD configure node. And here with the RBD configure node, we can keep mostly everything by default, except for the deforming value. Here we can put that on one because we are changing the P scale attribute on SOP. So we can put the deforming to one. And here we can put the sleeping value at zero. But everything else is by default. So now we can also enable the constraints. And here we can enable the pin constraint. So you can just click on that. And in that case, we can create a glue constraint. So now let's add the RBD bullet solver. Ready to level up your Houdini pipeline? Get the Houdini Script Pack. Complete toolkit, seven powerful tools today, plus every future release with free updates. Save time on composition, geometry splitting, material creation, and more. YouTube subscribers get 50% off with code TOOLKIT. Click the link in the description and transform your workflow today. So here, if you want, you can rename the constraint name. So you can remove that one. You can add an attribute, wrangle. And here you can plug the constraint to this one and you can plug that to the constraint input. So here you can run the attribute wrangles over primitive because constraints are primitive. And you can type s at constraint name is equal to, maybe you can call it glue constraint. So now under the RBD bullet solver, you can go to the setup. Here in my case, I will keep everything by default. So now you can go under properties. So here I will change the collision padding to 0.01. Here I will keep everything by default, but I will increase the bounce to one and decrease the friction to zero. So here under the force tab, I will decrease the gravity to zero. And under the advanced tab, I will select my constraints. So here I can go to the soft constraints and I can select my glue constraints that I have created just before with these little options. So here you can play with different value for the, st the stiffness and the dumping ratio. But in my case, I will put the stiffness value at 0.5. And for the dumping ratio, I will put the value at 0.01. So here for the rest length and so on, I will keep everything by default. So here we can dive inside the RBD bullet solver and we can add a bit of drag. So let's add a pop drag. And here for the value, I will put the, the hair resistance quite low. So I will put the value at 0.01. And here I will add the pop speed limit. And here I will plug that to the pre-solve. So here I will put the minimum spin to zero and the maximum spin to 10. Otherwise, we can get some pieces that spin quite a lot. So with this node, we can limit the spin value. So now we have our simulation. So we can take the simulation point here. Let's add a file cache. And here we can rename it something like RBD simulation low res. And here we can put that under the cache folder and under the dollar $OS folder. And you can put that in cache for, let's say, 125. So you can replace the value here with 120. So now you can click on Save to Disk. So now we can upraise our simulation. So you can select every 3D model here. You can also select the attribute from pieces and the copy two points. And now you can uh, copy paste this one on the left. So you can press Alt and left click. So now instead of using the poly reduce node, you can use the subdivide node. So you can remove all that one. Let's add the subdivide node. And here you can copy and paste that to the second one and also to the third one. So we can keep the depth at one for the subdivide, but of course it's up to you. It depends on your 3D model. You can put the value at two if you want. And here you can also add the material soft node to assign some material on the 3D model. 
So here you can put one here, one here, and one here. In that case, we have three materials, one for each individual 3D geometry. And now we can use the transform pieces node. You can plug that to the first input of the transform pieces, and you can put the simulation point to the second input of the transform pieces, and you can visualize the result by clicking on this. Of course, don't forget to select the copy to point and click on pack and instance. So now you can see that we have quite fast preview of the iRays 3D model on the scenes and you can see at some point we have some box here. So this is because we have some limit for the total polygons inside the viewport. So here this is just for the preview but of course we have some iRays geometry. And now you can see that we have this simulation. So now we can add a null here to specify this is the output. So we can rename it out rbd object. And now you can put that under a new geometry container. So you can copy this one. So you can hide this one and let's add an, a new geometry container. You can rename it render RBD object. So here you can dive inside and you can add an object merge. So now you can paste the null inside the object merge. Now you can see that we have all the RBD pieces under this new geometry container. And here, if you are using Redshift, don't forget to select the geometry container, go to Redshift object. If you don't have this option, you can go to the Redshift tab and click on Add Object Parameter. And here you can go to inst Instancing and don't forget to click on Instance Sublevel Pack Primitive. So here you can assign your material here with a material sub node for each individual object. And now you can just uh, render your scene as it is. So you can add some lights and some materials. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one, bye.